Welcome to Wednesday's wellbeing message with a bit of a difference. Today's message comes all the way from Australia and Dan Island. For those of you that have met Dan before, you will know that he's passionate about wellbeing and looking out for others. We're going to focus on mindfulness. Dan is going to describe what mindfulness is and also reflect on the importance of concentration and attention. Dan, I'm going to hand over to you before another tractor, motorbike or car beeps when it's going past my window. I think I need the attention and concentration. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dan from Awareful and this is a four week Fundamentals in Mindfulness course. Wonderful to have you on board. So, week one. This week we're going to be exploring this idea of concentration and attention and why it matters so much in mindfulness. And also we're going to explore a little bit about what it is and what it isn't and, and hopefully begin to sort of apply it to life, which is, uh, I guess, why you're here, to begin to work with this incredibly distracted mind that we have and bring a sense of calm and ease that the science points to that a, a repetition of this practice can really help. So what is mindfulness? And it's a great question, because I don't know. Now, mindfulness is one of these things that it's not something that can be given to you. You can't be given mindfulness. It's something that we, through repetition, tend to sort of feel. It's this reminder to continue to check in and get a sense of how am I responding to my environment? How do I think and feel about things? How am I reacting? What am I overthinking about at the moment? And importantly, it's a, a process of then beginning to manage when we turn inwards and we don't like how we're thinking and feeling about things to um, get ourselves out of or manage more effectively these ensuing thoughts and emotions. So if you think life, us, continue to clash. And because we've got no tools and techniques to manage this clashing with life, we then drag along with us the weight of emotion and guilt and regret and frustration and anger, all these incredibly disruptive emotions. We drag them with us into the rest of our day. And so what we're trying to do with mindfulness is, I guess, create a little bit of space between life and us. And it's not like all of a sudden you get this mindfulness bubble and you're completely protected against life now. You're, you're doing your mindfulness. It's, Impossible. You'll still stub your toe, you'll still ding your car, you'll do all these things. All these things happen. But what it does do, it creates a little bit of space between what's happening and how I'm reacting to it. And importantly, begin to ask questions of, is it necessary? Am I required to do this? Will how I'm reacting now make future me happier? And so mindfulness really is this, this reminder to continually check in. And in fact, it actually comes from uh, an old Sanskrit word which means to remember. And I suppose mindfulness is more rememberable, if that's a word. That we need to make these practices or the repetitions of these practices rememberable so that when we get stuck in things, we have something to call upon, some tools to begin to sort of utilize to help manage us through these more difficult parts of our life. And so we start with a little practice of concentration. And concentration um, is a really important place to start. And why do you think concentration might be an important place to start? What's that? Yes, absolutely, you're spot on. So concentration is important because we need to know what we're concentrating on. Now we have to know where our mind is. What are we focusing? What are we harnessing this attention on? What are we concentrating on right now? And the, st the other side of it is that we need to learn how to concentrate. Now, who, who in your life, how many times, if, you've, if you're a parent or even as kids ourselves, how many times have you told someone to concentrate or been told to concentrate, but ever been shown actually how to concentrate? <laughs> Never, right? No one ever teaches us. No one teaches you this is how you concentrate. And do you know what? What we really need to begin to learn, and actually the concentration part is something that we can do. We're actually not too bad at concentrating. We can focus on things for a, a certain amount of time before our distracted mind takes us over. 
But ultimately, what we're not good on is the failure of concentration. That actually concentration is easy, but we recognise actually we need to know when we're failing at it. That we need to know when we're distracted by things. When we need to, we need to know when we're distracted by this external stimulant world which we live in, this sensational world, and begin to bring a sense of calm, sense of control, a bit of balance back into how we're experiencing it. And so concentration is this tool that allows us to fail at concentration. It allows us to recognise I'm, co I'm not concentrating at the moment and I'm just going to bring my attention consciously back to where I want to hold it. Now, we're going to do a little practice just to help sort of give you an idea about this sort of uh, conscious holding of attention and how we can begin to manage this wonderful mind that we have, this enigma that we have upstairs. So what I want you to do, and it's going to seem a little sadistic because maybe this is the first time you've ever met me before, and apologies to those that have been on my courses and have done this, you'll probably find it's still going to work anyway, it's not like all of a sudden it stops working. But what I want you to do, I want you to think about something that has frustrated you this last day. Anything. Anything that you found yourself overthinking, ruminating, getting emotional about. I want you to bring this to mind right now and really hold it in your mind. I don't want you to get rid of it. I want you to think about what happened, who was there, all of these things. And that is the end of our session. So I look forward to seeing, <laughs> I'm only messing, it's not the end of the session, but coming back to the thoughts again. Sorry, my sixth sense of humor, I do apologize about that. But I want you to come back to your thoughts. I want you to come back to, to this particular circumstance. Really bring it to mind. Who was there? What happened? Don't let go of this thought. I want you to hold it in your mind like it's the most important thing in your whole world. Hold it there. And as you're holding it there, I want you to follow particularly these instructions. I want you to do exactly as I'm doing, but holding the thoughts. I want you to get your hand, I want you to place it in front of your face like this. So just, you've got your hand like this, just in front of your face. You can see your hand, you can see your palm. And all I want you to do is squeeze your palm. Okay, I want you to begin to feel the squeeze. I want you to feel how your fingernails begin to dig into the skin a little bit. I want you to feel how the knuckles begin to, see how the knuckles begin to change a little bit of the colour, how your forearm begins to tense up a bit, this feeling of tension that happens as we close our fist in this way. And where's the thought gone? Vanished, right? Disappeared. Incredible. So what does this tell you about your mind? That <laughs> it's easily distracted, yes, absolutely. But also that actually we're in more control of where we hold our attention than we recognise. That actually all we've done is just hold our attention at thinking. And we've thought about everything. You know, my teacher, he calls us the lost society. Because we continue to lose days. We lose weeks, we lose months, we lose years. Continually thinking about life and forgetting to experience it. And so, what you may have recognised is actually you could hold attention at thoughts, consciously, you're holding attention there. And then you're holding attention at the hand that actually you've shifted your attention away from thinking purposely and into the hand. And now this has become the most important thing in your life. That the other negative thing that happened to you that maybe you had overthought for the last day or so is no longer valid or important. Actually, the hand is the most important thing to you now. Much more important than the thought. If the thought was that important, you'd still be thinking about it. But you weren't. You were thinking about, oh, yeah, hand. It does. It squeezes. And I can see the colours change, all these things. Is that actually we've got more control than what we realise. That actually we're inadvertently, maybe unconsciously, holding attention just at thoughts. When really we can move around wherever we want to. And wonderfully what the science shows is we begin to hold attention in places that aren't just what we think about, that actually help what we feel about. We feel calmer, more relaxed. So today we're going to do a little practice. The link is in the file below or in the link below uh, on this uh, attachment to the email. And it's a little 
breathing practice, a little meditation that I'd like you to do, or what I also like to call a systematic mind training, because that's what we're doing. We're systematically teaching our mind where we want it to hold attention, not where it decides. But actually, I want to start learning how to bring this attention away from just how this distraction of thinking our whole life into how do I feel? What am I noticing? How is my body reacting to things? And like I said, that just that shift of attention into the body stimulates our parasympathetic system, our relaxation response, and makes us feel calmer, makes us feel more relaxed. And wonderfully what the science says, you know, 10, 15 minutes of repetition, of practice, of this holding attention in the body in a particular way on purpose, it relaxes us, calms us down. So that's it for week one. Thank you so much for your time. I do look forward to seeing you on week two where we're going to be exploring the idea of anchors and why anchors play such a significant role in this practice. But we're also going to be exploring uh, in the uh, second video is this idea of the formal and informalness of mindfulness. Have an amazing rest of your day and see you in week two.